Hi, Cohawk parents and families. My name is Madison Doctor, and I'm the Parent Programs Coordinator here at Co College. I have some representatives with me today from the Learning Commons and C3, and we're here to talk to you a little bit more about what resources those offices provide and what you can do as a parent to help support your student um, who might be looking for those kinds of resources. So um, like I said, my name is Madison, Parent Programs Coordinator, and I will let Nancy introduce herself next. Hi everyone, I'm Nancy Young and I'm the Director of Careers at C3. And C3 stands for Creativity, Careers, and Community and, uh, um, community Engagement. We include a fourth C, Community and Civic Engagement as well, which Joe will talk with you a little bit more about. Um, and we do all kinds of things with your students starting from first year through graduation and even with alumni, um, typically related to how to get involved outside of CO and also um, how to incorporate your future um, civic engagement or career um, exploration during class time and projects and such. I'm Laura Hayes. I'm the Accessibility Services Coordinator in the Learning Commons, and I help students facilitate academic dining and housing accommodations across campus. So I work with all departments across campus, and I primarily work with students, um, but I'm always happy to work with parents and, and those conversations that parents have at the very beginning of the student's um, experience at COBE. My name is Joe Demarest. I am the director for community and civic engagement. Uh, we are one of the, the C's or a couple of the C's of, of C3. Uh, my office and, and my role here really uh, connects with students to help them take part in uh, programs that can get them tied into the community, uh, whether that be through, through volunteering, uh, through work study, internships, uh, so, so work closely with, with students as well as the career side of, of, of our office on some of those initiatives. Uh, we also have a hand in civic engagement, uh, voter registration, voter engagement, uh, helping students process current events and, and how they can, can respond and react uh, as, as civic minded uh, individuals. My name is Mark Falk. I'm the Associate Dean for Student Academics and one of the co-leaders in the Learning Commons. Um, I also teach in the music department. Um, within the Learning Commons, it's sort of, it's a mix of faculty and staff. So I kind of help run the, the faculty side of the Learning Commons um, and also uh, play a big role in student retention, student persistence efforts, um, again, from the academic affairs side. Gotta remember to unmute myself. Don't have to do that on a live panel. <laughs> um, Mark, do you want to say a little bit more about what the different resources are in the Learning Commons um, that are offered by our different staff members? There? Yeah, I'd love to. Thanks, Madison. Um, yeah. And I'm going to be looking at notes because there are so many resources that when I do it off the top of my head, I invariably forget at least two. And then, um, you know, I've got to circle back a half an hour later and be like, right, and College Possible, how could I forget? So. I may have left some off the list. If any of you catch them, please let me know. Um, so the Learning Commons is basically um, like a one-stop shop for student academic support. It used to be that all of the various support services were different places on campus. And so for a student to find tutoring, they'd have to go to one place, but information about study abroad was somewhere else and the writing center was somewhere else. And so Co has put them all now in the same place. We're located in the uh, lower two levels of the library. Um, and really almost any kind of academic support that your student might need or want um, is housed there. So we have um, tutoring available for any class free of charge, um, academic coaching where a student can get paired with um, either a faculty member or a learning common staff for, as an academic coach, um, supplemental instruction, which is like extra class sessions for 10 or 12 of our um, kind of most popular and challenging classes. College Possible is also in the Learning Commons, which is a near peer mentoring program. Um, the offices of study abroad and fellowships are in the Learning Commons. Um, we have the testing center, um, accommodations and disability services that Laura will talk about more. Um, 
the Learning Commons houses our TRIO and AAP programs, um, and also has a math specialist and a lot of other um, kind of individual academic supports. And so we'll talk a little bit more later, but in general, a student can reach out to anyone in the Learning Commons and we will help connect them to the right kind of academic support that they might be looking for. Awesome, thanks Mark. Um, Nancy and Joe, kind of the same question to you. I know Nancy, you kind of gave um, the 30,000 foot view in your introduction, but what are some programs um, or initiatives or events that C3 normally hosts that our students can look forward to utilizing at Co? Joe, you want me to jump in here? Go for it, Nancy. All right. So um, we do a lot of one-on-one -on -one advising with students. Um, and uh, we also hold uh, a bunch of different events. And this year has been fun because we're doing th those events via Zoom, um, but we're still holding them. So as an example, uh, we have an annual career fair. Um, we have um, several career communities. Uh, those are different pathways that students might take, uh, larger, broader com communities, um, and um, we hold events for those. So we've got several coming up um, at the end of this month and in, in, in uh, February, and then we hold them throughout the year. Um, we also deliver a class. We help deliver a class called professionalism and self-presentation, uh, not preservation. I got to make sure not to say self-preservation, self-presentation. Um, and that is something where we walk students through the variety of tools that can be used in their uh, search for their own story of who they are and how they can tell that to a future employer or graduate school. Joe, do you want to talk a little bit more about what you do with community and civic engagement? Sure, sure. Uh, you know, on on our side of uh, of C three, uh, some of those events have have a, a similar thrust in terms of helping students connect to opportunities, resources, uh, information. Uh, traditionally, we hold a uh, involvement fest uh, beginning of the year. Uh, opportunity for nonprofits uh, and, and off-campus partners to, to come on campus, connect with students, and talk a little bit about ways that, that students can engage with those organizations, uh, maybe through volunteering, uh, work study, internships. Uh, so, it's, so it's nice to help uh, create a space to, uh, to connect those folks, kind of create a little bit more community and, and connections between our on-campus offices and, and off-campus opportunities. Uh, specifically this past year as we thought about uh, voter registration and voter engagement, uh, we, we kind of pivoted, made those events uh, maybe a little bit smaller in some respects, try to get them outdoors where we could, uh, but recognize the value of being able to support our students in a, in a number of different ways and in a number of different circumstances. So I think for all of us, it was looking at what services do we provide on a regular basis? How can we tweak those uh, for, for this circumstance? Uh, and still be able to have the impact that, that we often do. Uh, so, so those were some of the ways that, that we look to connect with, uh, with students and, and off-campus partners this past year in terms of, of activities and events. Awesome, thanks Nancy and Joe. Um, this is a question for everyone. When is the best time for a student to come visit you um, or to come ask questions about what you do? I can jump in <laughs> if that's okay. Um, what's interesting is, is um, we have kind of gone away from come to the careers office if you want an internship your junior or senior year or show up your senior year when you're trying to figure out uh, what you're going to do after co. And instead, we let the student body know uh, that they are far more comfortable their senior year about what their next steps are if they come to our office their first year. So we work with students um, first year through senior year. And um, when we take a look at our appointment demographics, it's pretty split about 25% um, on, on all grades. So we're very happy that, that we've um, made that outreach to first year and sophomores um, because that's the time to plan 
about what they think they might want to do and then try to do a little exploration before they come in saying, oh goodness, I have to do an internship to fulfill a practicum. I need something, I'll take anything. And, and that's not the best situation to be in. So we try to help advise them and, and help, help them discover what their values are and what, um, what meaning they can find um, outside of just taking a job. I'll go next. Um, the best time a student can come see me is right when they register for classes. Um, I can work with a student at any point in their, in their year, in their semester, in their years at CO, um, but the best time to work on any sort of especially academic accommodations is right when you register, you know your professors. I will instantly start talking with you about what those accommodations look like. We might go over previous documentation you've had or accommodations you maybe had in high school or at a different institution. And we will kind of build a plan and then I will communicate that plan to your faculty and that allows them to start crafting their syllabi, their classes with your learning needs in mind. And so it's really important that that happens early. Like I said, it can happen at any point, but um, it's harder, it doesn't work to do it retroactively. So if something comes up mid semester, we can start at that point. Um, but it's really best and most successful to start early. And as a faculty member, I just want to second that. Um, and parents, you know, let you know that, that this is a good place where your ad advocacy and gentle nudging of your students can definitely be applied. That ha having them go in and talk to Laura about any kind of accessibility or accommodations they might need, you know, right away when they get to campus or right when they have a new slate of classes at the beginning of the semester. Um, it's just, yeah, it's a really important, important step. Um, for the rest of the learning commons, I think there's, it's similar to what Nancy said. Um, it's good if you can come in before you have an urgent need and get, you know, the lay of the land, right? When I need a tutor, where am I going to find them? When I need an academic coach or help with study skills, um, you know, who's going to be the right person? Um, we're staffed both in person and virtually. So your student can walk down to the basement of the library and find us or send an email or fill out any of a number of online forms looking for academic support. Um, and we will get back to them quickly. Um, but just walking in is also great and whoever's at the desk can help them find the right thing. We do also offer just in time support, right? If you have a test coming up at the end of the week and need some help studying, uh, we can definitely provide that. But if you stop in at midnight on Thursday for a test that's 9 a.m. Friday, it's gonna be harder <laughs> to, to do much effective. Help. So I'd say encourage your students to, to come in and find us right away and then know where those resources are uh, for when they need them. I think from a, from a community and, and civic engagement standpoint, uh, similar to, to some of the things that Nancy had mentioned, uh, you know, I don't expect to see students the first day that they show up on campus. Uh, but, but what I have seen through, through my experience is that, that those students who are willing to uh, access some of those resources and have some of those conversations earlier on, uh, the experience that they have over the course of their four years may look very different than those students who maybe come to their junior year. Uh, and and uh, I understand that everybody is on their own timeline in, in terms of maybe when they access that information, how they put those pieces together. But, but for me personally, I think it's important to start that, that exploration, not only on a career you know, track, but also uh, personally, right? What type of work do I want to engage with? Uh, you know, how can I identify a an industry or a career uh, that's not going to help me only pay my bills, uh, but it's also going to bring me happiness and and feel like the work that I'm doing has meaning uh, and has value. Uh, and and just from from a background in HR, knowing a number of people who who work for a paycheck only uh, and what that experience was like for them, uh, I just think it's critically important for students to to explore, think about their options, reflect on that, and then figure out, hey, how can I, how can I align my, my passions with a profession uh, so that I'm really setting myself up not only to be successful, but uh, be happy and to enjoy what I do. Uh, so I'd so love to see them uh, early, but whenever they decide to come talk to us, we're always happy to talk. 
Yeah, I'm going to kind of go back to something that Mark mentioned um, about the gentle nudge um, from parents can really be beneficial for students um, to kind of seek out the resources that are provided from this group. So um, what would you all say to parents or what's a piece of advice that you can share with our parents about supporting their student or kind of, you know, encouraging them to visit you earlier rather than later? Well, as a parent of three daughters, um, my youngest is heading into college next year. I've already had two go through. Um, I've, I know, <laughs> I get it. Um, my own, my middle daughter, who is, is a, now in, successfully in graduate school, uh, when I took this job, she said, I find it amazing that, that, people will, that people my age will come to you and listen to you because I don't listen to you. And I'm like, I know, yeah, nobody listens to their parent. But, uh, but we are almost for sure backing up what you're saying to them. I, I can almost, uh, I, every experience I've had um, where a student has says, oh, my parent told me to come in. I'm like, well, your parent was right on that one. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we, uh, we like uh, when parents nudge their students to come to us. Um, um, we obviously need the students to have the motivation themselves to take it to the next level. But uh, we certainly um, know that at, at some point, almost everyone is going to be find themselves in the workforce whether they go directly to the workforce after undergrad uh, from co or whether they go uh, after graduate school or whatever, they're gonna find themselves in the workforce. So we can help them navigate that. And there's a variety of ways to do it. We can give them insider tips. Um, we can um, basically give them the basic skills and, and show them the tools that they can best utilize to, to get themselves out there and to help them know themselves enough so they can distinguish themselves through their story. It's basically telling their story to whoever's making a decision about whether they're gonna get employment or the internship or get into graduate school. They're, they need to tell their story of who they are and we help them identify who they are and then tell that story through the different tools that are out there. For my office, parent support is really practical. Um, I know for me as a college student, I did not know how to request a, a letter from my physician. I didn't know who my physician was. I didn't know how to contact my physician. Um, and so if your parent, if your student um, is requiring accommodations, something you can help them with is contacting their physician maybe for them or modeling that, um, emailing me that information. Um, another thing that we often work off of is IEPs and so contacting the school district um, and just helping the student facilitate that provider to co-information that um, a lot of students still are learning how to do. And so that's really helpful for me when a parent steps in and says, you know, here's the IEP, here's the physician's information. Is there anything else we can get for you? Um, and as soon as I have that information, I'm able to meet with the student and start the process. From a uh, parent perspective, I guess, as it relates to, to some of the work that, that we do, um, you know, I would in, I'd encourage parents to remind your children about lessons that will serve them well throughout their lifetime. Because they're, they're lessons that I find myself coming back to in, in terms of um, putting yourself out there, uh, taking those risks, uh, understanding that uh, you're, you're gonna fail sometimes. You are going to hear no uh, when you apply to an internship or a job uh, and, and you get rejected. And, and that's, part of, that's part of life and that's part of the process. Uh, and, and how do we respond to those things? Uh, and how do we move forward? Uh, so, so I think from, from a parent perspective, giving your, uh, your children the confidence to, to go out and really explore uh, and, and find their own way to a certain extent uh, and, and supporting them and having real conversations as they develop going forward. Uh, you know, unfortunately in, in my time, I've heard students come back and say, well, my parents really want me to go and be an accountant, uh, but I love art. Uh, I, I know a lot of successful artists uh, who, who, who do very well for themselves. There are a lot of different careers in the arts, right? But, but I know uh, students can feel intense pressure in terms of, of maybe what expectations from home may be like. Uh, and, and this is a time for them to start developing the skills and, and mindset 
uh, that are going to serve them well going forward. So, so I think if you want to support your children, uh, you know, help remind them of some of those lessons uh, and to take advantage of the resources and to explore and, and try new things. Uh, ultimately, they will be happier uh, for the experience. And I know when I think about my kids and what, what I want for them, I want them to be happy. Uh, and I want them to, to, to think critically about things and, and come to their own decisions. And I know that's harder if I have my thumb on everything that they do. Uh, so, so while it may be difficult to step back, um, I, I think finding that happy medium of letting students explore and come to their own conclusions is, is important uh, for their development now and, and going forward. That's great, Joe. I, I almost hate to say anything after that because I'm <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, what he said. Um, I guess from an academic side, um, I would echo a lot of that. I think encouraging your students to um, look for the help that they might need um, to kind of get out of that mindset of asking for help or support is some kind of weakness or somehow like shows that you're not strong enough to do it by yourself. Um, we're really trying to move students and families away from that. We provide a ton of support and we provide, we are glad to provide it. It's part of what coming to a kind of school like Co, like that's part of why you might uh, want your student to come to Co because we have all these great supports. And so to ask for the support that they need to not feel afraid or less than to say, I need some help with this. I'm really, I'm struggling or that this is really challenging for me. How can I, how can I get that help? Um, and just for you to know as parents, and we'll tell the students also that um, college is hard and, it, and it's supposed to be hard. And that's why it's college. Um, most of our students will see a GPA drop from high school into the first semester or even their whole first year of college of, of almost a full grade point. And so if your A student comes home with Bs and maybe even some C pluses, you know, that's an opportunity for a conversation, an opportunity to look for academic support, but it's not a sign of failure and it's not a sign that they shouldn't be there or a sign that they're doing anything wrong. Um, that, that's, where, that's where growth is from trying new things that are challenging, learning through failure, figuring out how to do things better um, and, and reaching out for the support that they need. So I'd, yeah, I'd say just supporting them in whatever they're doing and um, know that it's gonna be challenging and that's, that's, it's built that way, that's, that's intentional. Yeah, I think you all gave really excellent advice, especially um, for our students who may be coming from, you know, first generation families. Um, I myself am a first generation student. And so my parents didn't know, you know, anything about any of these resources that um, our colleagues are sharing with us today. So um, that's all wonderful that you all have had that experience with your students and know that that's beneficial advice. Um, if our parents and families want to know more about your office, what is the best way um, that you would encourage them to reach out to you or do some research on, on the resources that you provide? Well, we have a website at C3. Um, we also have a, uh, an email that you can send an email. It's o hyphen career without an S, uh, o, o hyphen career at co.edu. Um, and our, uh, those are viewed every day and, get, and um, gets to the right person. So um, I would suggest uh, if you want to contact us, just email us, or you can take a look at, um, at our page and you can search it on um, Co's website. Um, go to Academics Centers, Center for Creativity and Careers, I think is what it's titled. Um, the easiest way is just accessibility at co.edu, um, accessibility services office. So just simply accessibility at co. Also, um, if you have a um, admissions um, advisor, they'll be able to, just yesterday I talked to an admissions advisor on the phone. So um, if you just, you know, you have one contact and you can say, I need, um, I need support in this way, they'll just call over to me and that's a really direct way. So you don't have to even take that next step. You can just talk to the person you already know. Yeah, uh, same for community and, and civic engagement uh, as, as careers. Uh, our info is, is under the, the site that Nancy mentioned as well. 
uh, also a directory online. Uh, so, so you can find us. It, it is not uncommon for, for me to get an email from a student who is yet to arrive at Co. Uh, looking for a little bit more information. Always happy to have those conversations ahead of time with, uh, with students or parents. Uh, one of the nice aspects of Co of us, of us not being a huge institution is, is you can find us uh, and, and we're accessible. Similar for the, the rest of the Learning Commons, um, you can browse the website, um, Learning Commons, uh, it's part of the Academic Affairs website at CO. Uh, the email is learningcommons at CO. Um, and we are, we're happy to hear from parents. And I think it's probably best if you can get your student to reach out for support, but we'll also take an email or a friendly phone call saying, I think my kid could use some tutoring or could use a little bit of outreach and we're happy to send an email, make a phone call um, and at least offer it. It's not a guaranteed, it's not as guaranteed of a connection as if they come in looking, but um, we're happy to do that from our side too. Awesome. Um, I think we're going to wrap up here in a minute, but before we leave, um, does anybody have any last minute advice, um, tips, Parting wisdom for our parents and families. Um, I'll say one thing that I've found helpful and that I think we've seen um, be helpful for parents is that if you can think of ways to have um, more specific conversations, you know, so make your leading questions not, how's it going? How are your classes? But, you know, tell me about this particular class. What's an assignment that you've really liked? What's a thing that's just driving you crazy about school? And, you know, how could we make it better? Um, to really, really dig in and try and get those conversations going. Um, and don't be afraid to ask also questions, you know, how's your sleeping going? How's your eating going? How are you, are you making some friends? What's your social connection look like? Um, you know, that, that is as hard as it can be as parents to ask those questions. Um, I think in mostly students do want to talk about those things. And so if you can, if you can find that lever to get in to that conversation, um, that can be really helpful. I also like to jump in and add kind of on what Mark just said that one of the goals of my office is not just to facilitate accommodations, even though that is, you know, a lot of the work, but is to build academic confidence through students asserting themselves. And um, so something I encourage students to do in our meetings and um, through accommodations, but also through weekly coaching meetings is to talk with their faculty on a regular basis, to talk with their friends, to talk with other resources, to go to C3, um, to learn about international, you know, trips. Um, and so something that, to Mark's point, is to ask, you know, reflective questions to get them thinking about their own educational experience, but ultimately to build their confidence so that when they do are finding those internships, they're not feeling, you know, scared or um, unqualified, but that they really feel prepared. And so um, I just want to add that that's a part, that's a part of all of our work, right? But it's definitely a part of um, my work with them, um, especially for students with disabilities who might feel like they're at a disadvantage already. I almost think that our office ought to create a new program right before Thanksgiving break of how to talk to your family members who ask you, what are you going to do with that career? <laughs> <laughs> or what are your plans? Um, we work with the students quite a bit on understanding that your major is not necessarily your entire career path. And that what you're really learning at CO is learning how to think and communicate and collaborate and create regardless of your major. And, um, or due to your major learning how to dive deep into a subject matter. And so for those students who, um, who are thinking, oh, I don't know what I want to major in, or, um, or they go back and, and say, well, you know, how can you get a job in that major? We certainly can help them with that. Um, people can get a job from any major, and not only a job, but a career, a fulfilling career. And so we will 
help them answer those questions for you if they come into our office. Um, you know, when when I think about my my college experience, uh, there were times where I came home and my hair was was much, much longer than it is now. And my beard was a lot longer as well. Uh, and I kind of would walk in the door and, and my parents would gasp a little bit. Um, I was lucky that they gave me the space to kind of explore some of those spaces in college uh, and, and help me figure out um, you know, how that was developing, you know, adding to who I was going to become. Um, so, so I think as, as difficult as it may be sometimes, thinking about intentionally creating that space and allowing that space for your children to bring things home which you may not have seen before, but college has introduced them to new ways of thinking, new people to connect with, uh, and they may still be processing it, right? My, my uh, intense love of, of poetry and Eastern philosophy was a nice little phase that I went through for a while in college, and, in it, when, and it helped me learn new things, um, and that was a time for that, right? It caught my parents a little off guard after, after you know, some of my earlier experiences, but I was lucky to have that space. So as difficult as it may be sometimes, try to create that space and have those real conversations with, with your children about what they're going through, uh, what we're going through as a society, uh, so that they have some comfort moving forward in terms of how to navigate in that space. And I think parents uh, play a very critical role in, in helping young adults and, and the students that we see at Co work through some of those things and help them learn how to decide for themselves. Uh, what's important and how they want to move forward while knowing that they have the support of their loved ones. And I know that may not always be easy in today's climate, uh, but I think that's the point that we all should try, uh, try to get to. Well, thank you all so much for sharing a little bit about yourselves and your roles and your departments um, and helping introduce our parents and families um, to the work that you do with their students at Co. So, um, Thank you again for being here. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Uh, parents and families, if you want to reach out to me, my email is mdoctor, D-O-C-K-T-E-R, at co.edu. Well, hopefully we'll talk to you soon.